Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski here, working on writing linear, quadratic, and exponential functions today in IXL's Algebra 1, Section Double C. All right, so I've got a couple examples of each. Um, number one, we have to be able to identify whether the table represents a linear, quadratic, or exponential function. And then number two, we have to be able to write that equation. I'm going to start off with some easy ones. I'm going to say they're easy because I'm given the y-intercept here. Um, and I guess before I even mention that, I should know that I'm noticing that as x goes up by 1, um, y values are going up by a constant as well of 9, okay? So that tells me that this is linear, okay? So it's going to fit that form of y equals mx plus b. So here we go, y equals, m is our slope in linear equations, which is 9 divided by that 1. That's how much uh, y goes up every time x goes up by 1. And then the b value there is our y-intercept, which, like I said, is given to us in the table. y is 4 when x is 0. So there's our equation, y equals 9x plus 4. Linear equations, you've been writing them for a while if you're this deep into Algebra 1. Okay, uh, well, this one's not linear because as x goes up by 1, y is not going up by a constant amount. It goes up by 4 and then by 12. What's really happening here is that uh, it's doubling, or tripling, rather. So times 3 times 3, and that pattern continues. Okay, that's a sign that we're dealing with exponential. So it's going to fit this form, y equals a times b to the power of x. All right, so in that form, um, a is our y-intercept, okay, which is 2. And b is our growth factor, which is 3. So y equals 2 times 3 to the power of x. So constant multiplying, that represents exponential. In this third example, my x values are going up by 1. And my y values, let's see, they decrease by 16 and then by 22, so it's not linear. Um, there is no constant growth factor, as in the multiplication isn't the same every single time. You can check on your calculator, 72 divided by 98 and 50 divided by 72 isn't the same thing. So this is quadratic. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, so it's quadratic. What I'm going to do is set up another table here, or another column in this table, and it's going to be x squared. So what's negative 7 squared? That would be 49. What's negative 6 squared? That would be 36. And what's negative 5 squared? That would be 25. And that's probably enough. And what do we need to do to this 49 to turn it into 98? We need to multiply it by 2. Or maybe 98 divided by 49 is 2. 72 divided by 36 is 2. That means 36 times 2 is 72. 50 times 25, or 50 divided by 25 is 2. That means 25 times 2 is 50. So we already know we're dealing with quadratics. So here's our equation now. It's going to be y equals our a value is that 2. That's our, um, it's like our, vertical stretch. We've talked about it in, in past videos like that. So 2 um, times our x value squared. The quadratic equations they ask us to write in this aren't that difficult. You can get get through them with just that format and just identifying that, that a value. Alright, so let's go through this one more time real quick here. Um, but also notice that there's a little bit more work we have to do this time. All right, so as x goes up by 1, first job is to identify what's happening with y. I see a decrease of 8 here, and then a decrease of 8 here, and that continues. So we know that we're dealing with linear. The problem is I don't have my y-intercept. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, take y equals mx plus b and figure out well, I mean, we could extend our table to negative 1 and 0. If we keep going down by 8, 15 minus 8 um, would be 7. 
and seven minus eight would be negative one. So there's our y-intercept. That's one way to do it. We can also, so that's called like a numerical method. We can also do it algebraically. We could do um, y equals mx plus b. And we could take a pair of x and y values and plug them into the equation. We could also take our slope and plug it into the equation. So here's what I mean. 15 is a y value. Negative 8 is our slope that we identified pretty quickly. The x value that goes with that 15 is negative 2. And then we could use that to find our b value. So solve that equation. Negative 8 times negative 2 is 16. And then if we subtract 16 from both sides, we get negative 1. So again, our y-intercept is negative 1. Now we can write our equation. y equals our slope, negative 8, times x, plus our y-intercept, or in this case, minus 1. So there's linear. That's how you find the y-intercept. You can do it numerically or algebraically. All right, what situation do we have going on here? As x goes up by 1, what happens to y? y is doubling. It's pretty obvious that it's doubling. Okay, that's an indicator that we're dealing with an exponential function. Again, though, we don't have the y-intercept. How can we find it? Well, we could just go backwards 1. All right, which means we would need to do the opposite of multiplying by 2, which is to divide by 2, and that would give us 0 and 3. So that would be our, that would be our uh, a value in this equation. So let's write our equation. y equals um, our growth factor, which is 2. Nope, not our growth factor, I'm sorry. We want our... We want our y-intercept, which is 3, um, times our growth factor, 2, to the power of x. So y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. A is your y-intercept. B is your growth factor. And that idea of plugging a point in will work for this as well. Um, so we know it's y equals a times b to the power of x. So if we use that point, we'd have 6 equals, we figured out the, uh, we don't know the a value, okay, but we do know that the growth factor is 2. So we could put that in here and then raise to the first power because that's the x value that goes with that 6. So 6 equals a times 2 to the first power, which is 2. And then you divide both sides by 2, and you get 3, which is our y-intercept. So there's an algebraic way. There's a numeric way. All right, and one more, and you guessed it. It's going to be quadratic. So we can tell it's not linear because y went down 15 and then 25. That's not constant. Um, 5 times 4 is 20, but 20 times 4 would be 80, so we know it's not exponential. So this has got to be... Um, this has got to be quadratic, all right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the x squared table. This is probably the easiest thing to do. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So what do we need to do uh, to that 1 to turn it into negative 5? What do I need to multiply it by? Negative 5. Negative 5 divided by 1 is negative 5. Negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. Negative 45 divided by 9 is negative 5. So quadratic, y equals that negative 5 is our a value, and that's all we've got to figure out to do these quadratic ones. Quadratics obviously get a little bit tougher than that, but that's all you need for this particular lesson. All right, so I gave you a couple examples each of how to write linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. Told you how to find the y-intercept, the slope, the growth factor, and the a value in a quadratic. Um, good luck, and let me know how it goes in the comments.